I'm Aaron Fawn. I'm Aaron Fawn, and I'm on a trip for life. Cosmos is full beyond measure. Elegant truths of exquisite interrelationships of the awesome machinery of nature. I believe our future depends powerfully on how well we understand this cosmos, in which we float like a boat of dust in the morning sky. Last time, we explored how monolithic domes are made, what their benefits are over conventional construction techniques, and how to look at their unparalleled disaster resistance. This time, we'll continue to explore the possibilities of the system, and we'll have a look at some of the obstacles that might present themselves if you're inclined to build a monolithic dome. Let's start with a question that's probably been on the minds of anyone who's interested in creating the most efficient structure possible, the amount of energy invested in the dome itself. First, we've never found anything that will stand up like concrete. Yet we have been able to minimize the amount of concrete. We can make a home with just about as much material in addition to the floor as the floor takes. In other words, if 10 yards of concrete pours the floor, we can build the shell for an additional 10 yards. But more important than that, way more important than that, is we don't have to do it over again. When you build a conventional building, you put a two by four in it, you've signed its death warrant. Conventional houses, 75 years, 100. There's a few that last longer, but most are less. These buildings, I expect them to last until somebody tears them down for another reason. They have no reason not to last 500 years. Physically, it's, I find them faster and easier. It's more a perception than anything. Uh, the perception is, is spraying concrete over the head's got to be a problem when it's really not. For instance, shotcrete was applied to this transit tunnel near Stockholm to stabilize the rock, overhead on an irregular surface for thousands of feet. Spraying concrete overhead is not a problem. Right now, that's my most frustrating thing, and that's why I pretty well backed away from selling houses. Number one, there's such a house glut on the market that more houses really aren't very badly needed. Number two, the government has mandated some new rules on appraisals, and the appraisals almost shuts you off as far as financing houses because they want to have a house that looks just exactly like another one down the corner that's sold within the last six months. So it's, it's, out, it's almost impossible to finance these houses now because of the rules. We still are selling some, but we're selling them to people that have finances above and beyond. It's really frustrating because you got the world's most energy efficient, strongest, toughest, safest building. You can't get them financed, primarily because of those appraisal rules. And I laugh and poke fun at them. I say, guys, every tax assessor knows how to appraise them. Why can't you guys learn something from that? One of the things that I really feel is important is to try and help our low-income people in America. Finding a place to live is extremely expensive. And so what we did is we decided to develop a very low-cost structure. Now that doesn't mean a cheap structure. I can build cheaper buildings, but these are permanent structures. They got the safety from fire and tornadoes. But they're small, and these small structures we rent by the week, so people don't have to come up with three months up front. We take care of the water and the power bills, and so we rent them. They rent from $80 a week up to $120 a week with all the bills paid. Well, obviously, as you get into big ones, you have to be a little more careful that you don't drop it on you while you're building it. But uh, 
other than just paying attention to the construction process, um, we don't see any serious implications until you, well, right now we're not willing to go above a thousand foot clear span, but that's still a, a huge building. Probably my most favorite is school buildings. I build a school and I know the children are safe from the earthquakes and the tornadoes, whatever. And I know that the energy it saves, they can use to pay for the school. Uh, generally, the energy savings will pay for a school in 20 years. Or you can give the teachers a 3% raise for their work in the school. I like building churches. Um, I really like building industrial buildings. And we build a few water tanks and oil tanks with the same technology. And what we're seeing right now is the use for the future will be growing food inside these domes using artificial LED lights. We expect to be able to grow food for less than outside and it'll be cleaner, neater, available to us in our own localities. The idea is, is that if you grow a tomato out in the field, in one year you can grow about two and a quarter pounds of potato per square foot of ground. In these domes, we expect to grow a minimum of 200 pounds or maybe 300 pounds and it's available wherever we live. And you use the LED lighting. It doesn't take much light to actually grow a plant if it's the right wavelength. And by using the LEDs, we're able to grow a tremendous amount inside with not a lot of extra energy. And then if we take the food off of it and work over the, the residue, we can make fish food out of that and dump it into aquaculture building that's growing fish. And then when we get through, we take the offal out of the aquaculture, overhaul it, and put it back in to the grow domes. So we have a, a closed circuit. But you grow food in a grow dome with 10% as much water, with about 7% as many added nutrients, and you'll grow them 24-7 around the clock. Partly because you can fake the plant out. You give it a seven and a half hours of light, half hour of dark, it's had a day. You do it again, it's got another day. We get three days growing in one calendar day. And we can grow a head of lettuce from a tiny seed to a full grown head in 18 days. I really try and keep my nose on the grindstone of domes. It is such a huge, huge open area that I'm working on domes for everything. Right now, I'm dancing with a group about growing food. I expect to have to grow 70% more food than we're growing today over the next 35 years. That's huge. That's beyond the capability of this earth unless we do this. I was approached by the Dallas Baptist men. They're a group that try and help people. And they've asked me if I would try and help move these water filters around the world. And at first I thought that was crazy. But the reality is, is we have so many people visit our website. And so many people that we talk with around the world that these water filters needed to be out there, and they're spectacular. They'll take out every virus and every bacteria. It's clean, and we've, we've done enough with it. We know that it's clean. Um, it saves lives, and I've had customers in Africa just attest all over that what it does to make it possible for their workmen to stay alive and healthy. Uh, and they're cheap. 
and every home in America ought to have one in their emergency preparedness kit, and then one for every family, especially in the developing world. Well, the classes are four times a year, April, May, September, October. We try and stay out of the hot summer and the cooler winter. And we have people come here. It costs them roughly $1,000. We start Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock, and they go till 7 at night for four days, and on the fifth day they go till noon. And uh, we feed them. We don't put them up. They have to stay in the nearby motels. But the idea is we teach them. They do build a small dome. And the idea is to learn how to, the concrete sprays and how the smoke foam smells and stuff. Most of the time is spent in class, learning how and why and what concrete is and what you need to do to make it work better. And all of the things that go with doing it. When the people get through, they're not experienced dome builders, but they have the raw knowledge and the books and the engineering to go ahead and build domes. So if you would like to build a structure that embodies the qualities of being relatively inexpensive and easy to set up, highly energy efficient and disaster resistant, and very durable over time with relatively little maintenance, then you need to think outside the box and think of monolithic domes. The sky calls to us. If we do not destroy ourselves, we will one day venture to the stars.